Hello everyone, Wylock here. Welcome back. Well, it took three years, but I have finally produced some jungle scatter terrain that I am happy with. The breakthrough came by watching some other people's channels and aggregating their techniques into what worked for me. So I'll show you step by step how I made these, and let's get to it. Now, traditionally, scenic bases are MDF board, a few millimeters thick, but that's expensive, requires power tools, and produces dust. What I like to do is start with cheap foam board. This is the stuff from the dollar store. Just cut out a base, and then taper around the edge all the way around like this with the knife at an extreme angle. And then with some very thick card stock, I use chipboard, which is the stuff at the back of a legal pad, but you can buy it in bulk like I do. This is graphics medium chipboard. There's a link in the video description below. Anyway, hot glue the foam to it and kind of try to make sure you have a bead of glue towards the perimeter. Doesn't have to be perfect. Get it on there and then lop away the excess using scissors. I use kitchen scissors because chipboard is pretty robust. And then sculpt a mold, or whatever the modeling paste of your choice may be. So two parts sculpt a mold to one part water, and then I spread it out over the base. I quickly realized that using a popsicle stick was not working very well, so I decided to get messy and just use my fingers. I made sure to sort of cram it along the edges, the intent being to seal up where the foam meets the chipboard and just encase that whole edge. This is why I was so careless with the glue earlier, because I knew I would be doing this. Another advantage of the foam underneath is that foam doesn't absorb water, moisture, so the sub-base will not warp as the sculpta mold is drying. Anyway, the next day it's time to flock, so a solid coat of white PVA glue, and I don't water it down for this, I just make sure and do a good solid coat. And then mixed aggregate, this is construction sand from a $4 bag, 50 pounds, lifetime supply. A few hours later, that's totally dried, gonna do a solid brown base coat. I did not use burnt umber, instead I used a richer chocolate sort of brown. Again, wanted to break my own routines and experiment. By the way, a very wet brush will help out a lot here to cause that paint to seek into the sand via capillary action. Here's the whole batch done up, give them a couple hours to dry. And here's one dry. Notice that in some spots the paint was a little too watered down. This looks kind of splotchy, but actually that's perfect. Free variation. Good thing. Picked out a light tan color and dry brushed. If you're new to this whole hobby thing, dry brushing means that you dip the brush in the paint, but then immediately work most of it right back off onto some paper towel or something like that, and then lightly strike at the piece so that all that raised detail, in this case the sand, picks out that color. Okay, from this point onward, like 85% of what you're gonna see is from two main YouTube channels. One is The Terrain Tutor. Mel is a legend and doesn't really need help, but you should be subscribed. The other is Bard's Craft, fairly new to the scene, but quickly becoming like my favorite new crafting YouTube channel. So go over there, subscribe, tell them I sent you. Now I'm about to get messy again, so some protective cardboard over my nice cutting mat. Here's the base in its current state. Dried oregano and parsley flakes, a dollar each from the dollar store. One's mostly green and the other one is varying earth tones. So I mixed them up 50-50. Then I coat the base with watered down Mod Podge, three water to one Mod Podge. You could also use white PVA glue such as Elmer's. We're gonna do more sealing coats later, so this does not need to be full strength. You should not expect the ground cover to be well captured after this first step, and that's okay. So after a few hours it should be mostly dry and it's time for a sealing coat. I was not shy with it. Gave him a healthy dose and let it sit overnight. And then for good measure I did it again and gave it another day to totally dry. This will also help seal in that aromatic oregano, which is charming at first but gets old pretty quick. I thought this was looking great, so this next step that Mel recommended I thought would be unnecessary until I tried it. Trust me, it's important. Water down some brown paint a lot, definitely to a wash, maybe a little thinner than that, and douse the entire thing. It helps to dab the brush instead of drag it so that you don't dislodge the flocking. It looks terrible wet, but it dries to be very subtle and really ties the whole thing together. Trust me, don't skip this step. Now if I were doing a forest, I think this would be a good base to start from, but since I'm doing a jungle, I want it to be a little more vibrant, so taking a tip from Bard's Craft, I'm going to take some green, this is palm green, and just overbrush with it. That's basically a dry brush, just a little more aggressive. 
and then follow that up with a lighter, more sporadic, more selective dry brush with yellow. Yeah, and you can see that really changes the character of the base. I think it really makes it ready for a jungle. And now the fun part, but real quick, 30 seconds of super obnoxious YouTuber calls to action. If you dig this video, then please like, subscribe, reminder bell. Want to support the channel totally free? Use my Amazon affiliate links in the description below when you buy stuff. Totally transparent to you. The only difference is that I get a small kick from Amazon for having referred you. Our sponsor is Heroes Horde, an outstanding source of models for you 3D printers out there, including but not limited to all True Tiles lines. And don't miss my D&D 5th edition one-shot modules over on the DMs Guild. And now the fun part. Let me show you everything I'm going to be using. I've got these bouquets of fake plants from the crafting store. I think they were one or two dollars each. I just got like eight or ten varying types, including a bundle of tall grass blades like these. You'll need a lot of those. After the main plants, I start to fill things out with these smaller broadleaf clumps. I'll be using these on every single base, in every single clump, so the intent is these are the commonality. They will unify the general look among all the pieces. Below those, I'll start filling out using moss or lichen, whatever this is called. I got two colors for variation. Below that, clump foliage. These are left over from the huge miniatures Kickstarter a few years ago. And finally, these army painter tufts that I nabbed at Mace last week. So this is a bent pick tool or an awl, anything pointy will work here. Just gouge out a small hole. And this is easy because we're digging through brittle sculpt mold and then just foam underneath. Inject with a dab of hot glue and insert the large plant feature. Extremely strong connection. I like for each cluster to have between one and three grass blades, and then one to two variant plants. So here I've got seven clusters started. Now to those smaller cloves, and I think a key advantage with these is that the leaves all face different directions. As you're shopping at the craft store for fake plants, look for that. It's an important nuance that maybe isn't obvious at first. These are attached in the same way, gouge a hole and then hot glue them in. So here you can see I've done one to three of these per cluster. And now onto that moss lichen stuff. I just hot glue these tufts on. Maybe two thirds of the clusters will get one and maybe there's one by itself out in the open between clusters and I use both colors. Then the clump foliage. This is just pools of white PVA glue, such as Elmer's. Again, maybe two thirds of the clusters will get some amount of clump foliage. And again, there's some out in the open or maybe let the edge of the base itself. And finally, the small grass tufts. Attach them as you like. Mostly right up against existing foliage, but again, maybe out in the open or right up against the edge of the base will add some nice chaos. As always, context is important, so here it is set up with my Tau and Custodes house armies. The way I'll use these is probably just that the bases extend infinitely, so they'll block line of sight and they can't be occupied, even though there is space in there for troop models. By and large, I am finally happy with how these came out. Uh, as always, things to do better, and this time I think that what I wish I would have done is vary the size of the clump foliage and the moss, so some big, some small, I kind of did them all the same size. A little more variation would have been nice. Another really cool idea that I've seen that I obviously didn't do here is the clumps of foliage, you would put them on their own round base, which would fit in a basically a circular cutout in the base so that you could remove the features if you wanted, if you wanted models to be like in the jungle. Again, I think the meta lesson here is to break your own routines or you're never gonna get the solution that you want. I just, I have such a hard time with nature stuff and it took completely abandoning my usual way of doing things or uh, not going with my initial inclinations as to what techniques to use. Instead, I just went out, did the research, uh, let some other people show me the way. Sometimes you gotta let the solution come to you. So to reiterate just one more time, The Terrain Tutor and Bard's Craft, two excellent YouTube channels. I'll have links in the video description below and I'll throw a card on the screen. 
Excluding dry times, I think I probably put five to six hours of work into making these. I think there's 14 scatter pieces out there. Oh, another thing, all my bases are basically ovals. An L-shaped or like a dog leg shaped base would have been cool too. I could use it to wrap around other features, like that pond you see in the middle. Durability has been excellent. I can handle it by the plants themselves because they're hot glued in and uh, I haven't had any shedding of the, the uh, oregano or the parsley. So again, at least two coats of that thinned Mod Podge sealer and the aromas are gone too. By the way, this is on a frontline gaming mat, which is my mat of choice. I highly recommend them. And the generic crags that you see, we did in a previous episode. I'll throw that on the screen as well. I'm really excited to use these in my next game, which I will be doing a battle report on. So look for them to show up there. If you like this particular project, here's two more you might want to check out. Also, enjoy this community showcase. I'm Wylock, thanks for joining, and I'll see you next time.